Okay, everyone, we're going to keep moving right along just to keep ourselves on schedule here. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, so if you don't remember from this morning, because your coffee hadn't kicked in yet, my name is Kaylin Boyd, and I am a policy analyst with the Schizophrenia Society of Ontario. Uh, today, at the fourth annual Patients Redefining Healthcare Summit, I am delighted to have the distinct privilege to introduce Robin Martin, the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Health, who will bring greetings on behalf of the Government of Ontario. Ms. Martin is working tirelessly to coordinate and connect Ontario's healthcare system to make it more efficient, sustainable, and responsive to patients' needs. She has been part of numerous efforts to improve healthcare in Ontario, including important investments in hospitals, and focusing on building a connected health and mental health care system. Uh, just recently, the Schizophrenia Society had the pleasure of working with Ms. Martin on a new Ontario mental health and addiction strategy. Prior to her work at Queen's Park, Ms. Martin practiced litigation for over a decade, specializing in general commercial law, environmental litigation, and medical malpractice. Ms. Martin has volunteered with many health organizations and was instrumental in getting a universal cancer screening program adopted by the Ontario government. She's also provided free legal services at the Leighton Park Ratepayers Organization and is regularly found actively engaging in health charities such as the Run for the Cure and the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Please join me in welcoming Robin Martin. Good morning, and thank you, Kaylin, for that kind introduction and for the opportunity to be here today at the Patients Redefining Healthcare Summit on behalf of our Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, Christine Elliott. Your dedication to patient-centered healthcare is admirable. And for that, I wanna say thank you. This is an exciting time for Ontario's public healthcare system because we're on the cusp of significant change. Change that is going to make a positive impact in the lives of Ontario patients. Because all Ontarians deserve a connected healthcare system that puts their needs first. They all deserve peace of mind that our healthcare system will be sustainable and accessible for everyone. No matter where they live, no matter how much they make, no matter what kind of care they require. In Ontario, we're fortunate to have an excellent healthcare system led by some of the world's most renowned healthcare providers. Yet I think we can all agree that there is an urgent need to make the healthcare experience better for everyone. Many patients, families, and caregivers feel lost. They don't know how to access the right services, and they wait for far too long for those services. And I know that everyone would agree with me when I say that it's unacceptable to see patients receiving care in hallways, in hospitals, in, or in storage rooms for that matter. That really is no way to treat our loved ones, and it's really no way for any health professional to provide excellent quality health care, which we know they want to do. We must have a system that is connected and that is more responsive to patient and provider needs. If we expect real improvements that patients will feel, we must better coordinate the public health care system so that it's organized around a patient's need and focused squarely on better health outcomes. And that's why our government is moving forward with the creation of local Ontario health teams that will connect health care providers and services around the needs of patients of families and of caregivers. And as many of you are aware, we have made a commitment uh, to make mental health a priority. Because we believe that no one should have to wait for long periods of time to get mental health and addiction services that they need when and where they need them. But we know that that continues to be a challenge here in Ontario. It's a complicated issue. The minister and I did 19 roundtables across the province talking to many providers, people with lived experience, caregivers about that issue. It is quite complicated 
uh, and we already spend about $4 billion a year in mental health and addiction services, but we don't really have a clear line of sight sometimes into what we're buying or whether the outcomes uh, are good for patients in all of the services that we're paying for. So there's a lot of work to be done to sort out what we already have as well as where the new investments should be made to make sure that we're getting the right services for people. Uh, we've already invested as of 2019-20 uh, an additional $174 million to support community mental health and addiction services, and that's annualized investment. Mental health and justice services, supportive housing, which is critically important, and acute mental health inpatient beds, and youth and children's mental health services. But that's just the start. Our government is committed to investing a further $3.8 billion over 10 years to develop and implement a comprehensive and connected mental health and addictions strategy. And to oversee it all, you may have heard that we have proposed the establishment of a new mental health and addiction center of excellence within Ontario Health. And this <clears throat> comes out of the recommendations of the 2010 uh, All Party Select Committee on mental health and addiction services. Uh, and this center, which will put into operation our mental health and addiction strategy. It will develop clinical quality of service standards for mental health and addictions, and it will monitor the metrics related to the performance of our system. It will provide resources and support to healthcare providers, integrated care delivery systems, and others in our mental health and addiction sector, ensuring that they can provide the best possible care to Ontarians in need of support. So our government has been listening. We're going to continue to listen, and we're going to take action to transform our health care system. And we're going to continue to work toward creating an Ontario where everyone is fully supported in their journey toward well-being. Because we know that together, we will be able to make our healthcare system more inclusive and accessible for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robin, for uh, representing the minister uh, today. I'm wondering if you could uh, send her a message from those of us who uh, really appreciate her work. And please let her know that uh, patient representatives, including myself, who have worked with her since her time as the health critic um, in, the, uh, in opposition and now, realize that she's a strong supporter of value-based health care, and I know she will continue to be. So let her know that we'll be bringing her our report back from this meeting, and you as well, of course. And uh, we hope we'll have an opportunity to share the outcomes of our meeting um, with both of you. So thank you so much. <laughs>